Good morning and welcome to the next in our series of Bible readings from John's Gospel. It does seem uh, that at the moment uh, people are being challenged to think about deeper issues, perhaps spiritual issues. Those who put their trust in consumerism and buying products, uh, spending money, those who thought about socialising as the centre of their lives. These are being exposed as meaningless and worthless. Maybe people are being challenged to think about the state of their souls. At the same time, uh, the pandemic is highlighting issues of inequality and injustice in our societies and in the world. The fact that people from uh, poor backgrounds uh, are suffering more uh, and also that people from uh, black and ethnic minority backgrounds, BAME people, are also suffering more from the pandemic. In addition, finally, the uh, mistreatment of black people at the hands of the authorities is accentuating years and centuries of grievance uh, and uh, unhappiness at the hands of those authorities and has erupted in protests and even riots coming out of the, the pain that people are feeling in their hearts. Perhaps this is a time for us to address some of the deeper issues uh, facing our society and our world. Just as World War II was a prompt for the creation of the welfare state, in part uh, inspired by the Christian writings of the Archbishop of Canterbury at the time, William Temple. So I want to just read to you from uh, the trial of Jesus, just to get an insight on how we can and should speak up not only for the rights of others, but sometimes for our own rights. Often it's said that, uh, well, as Christians, we should stand up for the rights of others, but never for our own rights in a selfish way. But I want to, to, to ask you to look with me at John's Gospel, chapter 18, verse 19. John 18, verse 19. Meanwhile, the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. I've spoken openly to the world, Jesus replied. I always taught in synagogues or at the temple. Where are all the Jews where all the Jews come together. I said nothing in secret. Why question me? As those who heard me, surely they know what I said. When Jesus said this, one of the officials nearby slapped him in the face. Is this the way you answer the high priest? He demanded. If I said something wrong, Jesus replied, testify as to what is wrong. But if I spoke the truth, why did you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. So as I said, sometimes people... As Christians say, well, you shouldn't stick up for your own rights. That's just selfish. You should stick up for the rights of others, perhaps. But here we see Jesus questioning mistreatment of himself by one of the officials who slapped him in the face. And Jesus basically says, hey, if I did something wrong, tell me what it is. If I didn't, why did you hit me? Very simple little response, retort from Jesus. It shows that he didn't just take anything that came at him. And we know from other incidents that when they tried to kill him at other times, he, he slipped away or got out of the way of that plot. Yes, he was destined to die. Yes, he came for that purpose. But it was to die in a particular way, particular time for the salvation of the world. It wasn't just to, to be mistreated for its own sake. And so Jesus was quite willing to stand up for his own rights in a court, even though he knew he was destined to die for the salvation for the sins of the world. He didn't just take anything as it came. In a similar way, Paul the Apostle, when he was on trial, when he was arrested, pleaded or appealed to his rights as a citizen of the Roman Empire. Now, in many ways, those rights were quite limited, but he did appeal to them. And as a result, his trial was, was uh, sent up the chain to Rome. He used his rights under the law to defend himself. Now, eventually, tradition tells us he was executed by beheading. But he was willing to use his rights under the human law to defend himself. And we do this not just out of selfishness, but for two reasons. One is we are made in the image of God and therefore we are worthy of respect. And therefore, to defend ourselves against injustice is also a step to defending the image of God. And that comes to the second point. If I defend myself and my own rights, I am thereby preparing the way for the defense of other people's rights on the basis of what I may achieve. 
So I want to encourage you, whether it's being bullied at work by an unfair boss, whether it's suffering racial discrimination and prejudice, whether it's domestic abuse, sexual abuse, whether it's spiritual abuse at the hands of a pastor, do not suffer in silence. Speak out. Stand up. You are made in the image of God. You have great value and great worth. Don't let anyone take that away or deny it to you. And as a result, you will encourage others to stand up and to speak out. We need this today. We need this in the world. We need this in society. We need this in the church. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you are the God of justice. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who spoke out against injustice towards others and towards himself. And we pray that you'll help us also to stand up for the worth of your image in every person, including in ourselves. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being with me during these Bible readings. Remember that on Thursday, uh, our service will be shared live at, f at 7 o'clock. Uh, so midweek service brief. On Sunday at 11 o'clock and 4.15 in the afternoon for our French language service. Tomorrow, Tuesday, uh, we'll have another in our series called Thinking Aloud. Uh, at 8 o'clock in the evening uh, on Zoom, you'll find the link on our social media. And this will be a second session on uh, racism and on white supremacy, just to follow up on our discussion from last week. So please do come and join me in a, a completely open uh, forum to discuss and talk about uh, what God may have to say about these important issues for today. God bless you. God be with you. And he is with you. Amen.